So I don't know about you, but my lawn has seen better days for um, sure. Yeah, exactly. Even if you do have underground sprinkling, the chance of rain, natural rain doesn't look good anytime soon. Yeah, so. And so, you know, we I have a graphic that I put together this morning just to kind of illustrate how dry it has been. Since June 1st, we are now more than three inches below average for rainfall. And you can see that's in the Grand Rapids metro area. Wow. We're less, th and you can see it's across the board. Muskegon's had a little bit of rain compared to uh, Grand Rapids, Kalamazoo, and Holland, but really we have been very dry. And uh, unfortunately, it looks like we're heading into a hot, a hotter stretch of weather now with really no sign of any significant rain coming anytime soon. Yeah, so a lot of us have been asking the questions. We asked Kevin Slosser to come in from Harder and Warner Landscaping and Garden Center because we feel like we need the answers from a pro. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people have been talking about their, their homes, sure. their lawns, their investment. What's the recommendation? Um, I know people are thinking, do I water? Should I just not water the lawn? Should I water parts of my landscaping? Right. With the lawn, you're either, you have to stay on top of it mm -hmm. and water all the time, especially right now with, I mean, three inches of rain doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a lot. I mean, it's, it's a major, major, drought that we're in. Right, well, and I, and I was telling you, you know, you take the story behind those statistics, we had two days in June where we had two inches of rain total, so for basically 45 days, right. we've had less than a quarter of an inch total. Right, and, That's and the lot. heat makes a huge, obviously, impact on yeah. the lawn. The lawn, you're either, you should either stay on top of watering, water every day as much mm -hmm. as you can, or not water, because okay. the grass will be fine. But if you water just a little bit when you have time and you don't stay on top of it, then that's when the disease and the fungus can all take over because they'll stay alive as well. And then you have a bigger problem on your hand. Besides mm -hmm. brown grass, you have dying grass. Mm -hmm. Wow, so should we be setting up certain areas, uh, doing something? You feel a little bit helpless when you walk out of your home and then you see right. that, you know, and you say, okay, should I be doing something? I don't know. And it's, it's very hard. I mean, areas that are irrigated all the time are stressed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, you have to, it's just a really hard time. And, and shrubs and, and trees, you have to get water on. Even right. trees that have been around for a long time, just get water on that. And that's your investment, too, because right. a lot of people put, uh, you know, Japanese maples, really right. nice trees, shrubs, flowers. Right. I mean, I'll tell you, even some of the sugar maples that I think would be very hardy mm -hmm. and have been around for 20, 40, 50 years seem stressed this year. Yeah, and they're all starting to just hit their defense mechanism and their leaves start to curl a little bit and then suddenly they're one day color. they'll start to drop. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're okay. You know, they'll be fine next year. They're just having that early onset and if you can get water on it ASAP just put a hose on the tree no matter how big it is or shrub or bush and really all you you'll get a lot of people out there spraying yeah it helps but it doesn't you're better off just put the hose on the ground and let it trickle into the so times a day once a day uh, probably once once or twice a week is enough okay. you know for maybe 20 30 minutes for shrubs and maybe 40 to 50 minutes for what about a, tree, flowers? a tree Flowers, flower pots, just fill the pot up every day. Yeah, okay. Fill it up every day and move on to the next one. Uh, flowers in the ground, probably watering like this is okay. Yeah. You know, it'll do enough. We actually uh, opened it up to some viewer questions, and we actually have a, a question from a viewer who has a small orchard of about 35 different varieties of apple trees. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. They had no apples this year because of the frost, right. and now the trees themselves are starting to drop the leaves. So... How is the tree doing? Is it going to survive? And should they do anything at this point? If they can water, water. The okay. trees will be fine. You know, just like with the frost, the trees are fine. They just didn't produce this year. Uh, the leaves are just dropping earlier as its me defense mechanism. And if they can get hose out to the orchard, I don't know how far that is, or if they have a, like a water wagon or something like that, uh, you have to get water on it. We're telling a lot of our clients uh, that they need, you know, sometimes irrigation isn't enough you right. know, for those big trees. And you have all this investment in these trees, you're, you're better off calling a professional who can get water to you instead of keeping your fingers crossed. Okay. Especially if, if this goes another two, three, four weeks, it will, and then we're in 
big trouble. And well, and trouble you know, and, and we have the the U.S. Drought Index, which actually shows places to our south and west that have severe drought going on, which right. means that that's looking less likely we're going to get any significant rain right. here. Right. It's been a hard yeah. year. I mean, yeah. we didn't have a lot of snow, but it was difficult, and then spring yeah. popped so early. Then we had the frost <laughs> and freeze, <laughs> and now here we are. Been, it would be interesting to see what this winter so does. So do we have any future repercussions from what we're experiencing right now? I mean, when we talk about maybe our lawns next summer, let's say provided we're not going to have the same, you know, because this has been historic. Right. You know, do, is there something we have to think about or prepare for? I don't think so. I think once we do get some rain, fertilizing, Mm -hmm. Keeping keeping everything watered once the lawns do. I mean, as soon as we get a little bit of rain, the water okay. it'll, it'll pop back. Mm -hmm. and, and this fall, I think it's very important to everybody should get some fertilizer down for the winter to just help it pop next spring. Yeah, because we know those and all the all the vegetation is very very stressed right. after the season. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today, Kevin. Well, of course, you. our partners at Harder and Warner Landscaping and Garden Center, easy to find right there, uh, just off M6 at the. Uh, M37 interchange heading toward Caledonia. Yep. Yeah. Give us a call. If and you if you have, I was just going to say, ask <laughs> questions because they're good. You've got a lot of experience yeah. under your belt. So thanks a lot. Thank you for having me. We'll be right back. That's West.